Do you ever feel overwhelmed by the ever-changing world of technology? Tech It Out can help make some sense of it all. Breaking down geek speak into street speak, technology columnist, author, and TV personality Mark Saltzman covers consumer technology each week for every listener. Mark tackles the latest news, reviews, and how-tos to help you understand what's hot, what's not, and why. Hey everyone, welcome to Tech It Out, episode 203. Hope you're having a great weekend so far. We have a stellar show planned for you this hour and another $100 giveaway with Hotels.com, which I'll tell you more about shortly. We're going to kick off our first interview in a moment with a company called Wall Stories. These are cartoon decals for a child's wall based on popular kids' brands. But when you launch the Wall Stories app on mom and dad's smartphone or tablet and point it towards the decals, they come alive with stories and animation and interactive games and more. After that, we're going to talk with LG about what's new in OLED televisions, those crazy thin TVs and how they can supersize your viewing experience, whether you're binging TV shows, watching movies or sports or playing video games. Also on today's Tech It Out, we keep hearing about ransomware in the news. And so we're going to find out what to do if you are attacked. It's not just businesses and governments anymore. And what the cybersecurity experts at ESET suggest you do right after you're attacked. And should you pay? Never, they say. And we're going to learn why. All of this and more on a brand new episode of Tech It Out, powered by ASUS, which I'll tell you more about after our first interview, but also a thank you to Hotels.com for another $100 digital gift card giveaway this hour, which you can use towards a future stay in a hotel. Now that we're opening up, just go to MarkSaltzman.com. That's my website. And send me a note with the phrase, Tech It Out. That's MarkSaltzman.com, M-A-R-C-S-A-L-T-Z-M-A-N.com. You need to be a U.S. resident and at least 18 years old, or you could find me on social media and write the words Tech It Out on Facebook or Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn with my handle, Mark Saltzman. Again, that's Mark with a C. Good luck, everyone. And speaking of Hotels.com, the Hotels.com app is a must-have for your mobile phone for a few reasons. One is you get instant savings with access to secret prices. You could save an extra 10%, in fact, on thousands of properties worldwide with secret prices. And if you love Hotels.com rewards nights, you can get them even faster on the app and with some exclusive offers. You can opt in for push notifications so you don't miss them. The app is even better for Hotels.com Rewards members because you won't have to pay a fee to redeem your reward nights on the app. And when you're ready to travel, don't forget to pack the app because it's the perfect travel companion. You can save your confirmation and access your booking details on the app anytime, even offline. Again, head over to the App Store if you're on iPhone or Google Play Store if you're on an Android device and download the free Hotels.com app today. All right, let's officially kick off the show with our first interview. Augmented reality, or AR, blends, of course, the physical with the digital, and it can be very magical to the person seeing and interacting with that content. And so we're now going to learn about an innovative new product for kids called Wall Stories. Joining us on the line to chat is Elaine Paquin. She's the president of Quinco & Co., the company behind Wall Stories. Welcome to the show, Elaine. Yes, hello. So why don't we jump right in. At a high level, what's Wall Stories all about? Well, It's basically a special wall decor mural that triggers augmented reality animation found in our free wall stories app. It's wall decor. It's a storybook. It's also an educative game. It's an interactive creative tool to play with augmented reality. It's basically four products into one. Okay, so these are decals, right, that you would affix them to your wall, and they are often characters, and we'll get to some of the licenses that you have. And then just to walk us through it, the child or with the parent would open up an app on, say, a tablet or a phone and point it towards that decal, and something will come alive. Yes, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. So there's something within the imagery that's on the wall that will trigger the app to start moving and doing some animation. 
Yes. Yeah. And that's why I was saying it's very magical, you know, even uh, as a grown man, <laughs> well, maybe not in height, but in age, uh, <laughs> that, that I, I, I really love looking at AR content when it comes alive. It's, it's baffling because it does fuse the physical with the digital. So what age group would you say Wall Stories is for? And I did mention that you probably need a device in order to look at the content. Can you clarify what's supported? Yes, absolutely. Well, it's it's for three years old and over. It seems young, but it's unbelievable how natural kids are with the mobile devices course, today. Yeah. At such a young age. I mean, you barely need to tell them what to do or where to go. They 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 simply just go. <laughs> very, very easy. From the menu after that, everything is is very intuitive. Okay. For them. And so iPhone, iPad, and Android. Exactly. So uh, from Apple store and google play store okay that's where you'll download the app for free before we dive deeper into the various modes that you hinted at earlier i think it's story game and creative what licenses do you have and how many different sets of decals or wall stories decals do you offer okay well we we have licenses such as paw patrol sesame street uh we just now got uh, peppa pig to join our, our team. And we also have a, um, a collection of four murals from a French artist, which is mostly somebody internally that we work with. And so this makes up a total right now of six different decals that we have. Mm -hmm. And we're working on two more that's in the works that uh, we should have available sometime in October. Well, that's great. And from a license standpoint, Sesame Street, Peppa Pig and Paw Patrol are some of the biggest for kids. So that's uh, fantastic. Congrats. Tell us more about the story mode. So you've got these decals on the wall. You open up the app, you point it towards and you, you tap, I'm assuming, story mode from the main menu. What uh, happens at that point? Well, you know, the, the whole thought behind wall stories is, is really to tell stories. So, you know, it, it all started when, you know, when I was young, um, I had posters on my wall, but that was it. What wall stories brings to the bedroom now is really interaction between what's on the wall and, and your kids. So what happens is basically once you trigger the app, the AR starts and then you select the uh, book icon and there you go you're right into the book and it's 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 just like an open book and f about 15 pages worth of stories that you will zoom through you've got music you've got background noise and you're really immersed into the story mm. um right now um you can either choose to to have a narrator for the story or you can actually read the story by yourself or have your parent read the story with yourself. Oh, I like that. That's great. All right, Elaine, now please explain the game mode to us. How do you interact with wall stories? So, so the games vary uh, per product, uh, but we right now have four different types of games that we offer. So there's the Simon's game, the seek and find game, the memory game and the coloring game. So these are the four types of games that we currently have. And so depending on, on which game you get with which product, uh, obviously they will play differently. Note that they're all oriented towards skills and learning. So the memory game, like the find and seek game, the coloring game, they're all educative type of games mm -hmm. that we work for. All right. Um, and, and Simon is like Simon says, where you have to, it's a memory game. Yes, it's a, it's a, it is a memory game. You know, we, we have a visual that comes up and you have to, to, to press the right button. And, you know, every success brings more things that you need to press. So uh, all the games have three graduating levels. So, you know, you, you've got lots of, uh, lots of hours for fun. We are chatting with Elaine Paquin. She is the president of Quinco & Co. This is the company behind Wall Stories. It leverages augmented reality. So when you place these decals on your wall and you download the free Wall Stories app and point the camera of that device to the wall, the images come alive. They seem to animate right off the wall. There's different modes. We've learned about story and game. Now let's end off on creative mode. Yeah, well, that's the most interactive part of the app. For every other features, you didn't have to be in front of the mural to operate them. But for this one, you have to stand before the wall decor. 
you look at the wall decor through the app, you're presented with lots of added icons, such as sunglasses, hats, clouds and flowers. You can add these to the wall virtually, of course. Um, your kids can create the walls uh, that, they, that they want. They can even take a picture of it and send it to their parents by text or email, if you wish. <laughs> Once they're done, uh, you can re erase everything and start all over. Just to be clear, is there audio when you're watching these animations and you're interacting and playing games and all that? Do you hear sounds coming out of your phone or tablet? Yes, yes. Okay. There's, it's mostly environment sound is what we did. For example, uh, you know, with Sesame Street, we're in the jungle. So you can hear the jungle in the background. and everything. That's great. Else, so, yeah. And with that in mind, Elaine, is this available in both English and French? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right, let's end off on pricing. How much do the wall stories cost? And I, I, I know you mentioned there's a half dozen options out there. So is it one price for each one or does it vary depending on which license you pick up? No, no, it's one price for each. I'm talking about $34.99. All right. And the best website to learn more about wall stories or are there any stores that you want to plug? Well, actually, wallstories.com is our website, but you can find them everywhere else on the web, Toys R Us, Amazon, they're all there. Yeah, it sounds fascinating, Elaine. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Again, it's wallstories.com and I appreciate your time. Have a great summer. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're listening to Tech It Out. I'm your host, Mark Saltzman. This show is powered by Asus for those in search of incredible. I'll tell you more about them right after this short break. Stick with us. We'll be right back with more. Listen to Tech It Out whenever you want. Find the Tech It Out podcast at iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Tech It Out on the Radio America Network. This show is brought to you by Asus for those in search of incredible. Asus creates technology for today and tomorrow's smart life, including its line of award-winning laptops and desktops, accessories like monitors, their smartphones, tablets, smart watches, and much more. For those in search of incredible, visit asus.com slash us slash radio for more. That's asus.com forward slash us forward slash radio. We love our televisions, whether it's binging the latest TV series from a streaming service, replicating the movie going experience in our homes with the latest Hollywood blockbusters, or playing an immersive video game or two. But if you haven't yet seen an OLED TV, you're missing out. And so I wanted to invite onto the show LG Electronics to talk OLED TVs, including its new C1 series TV lineup. Joining us by phone is Jill Pereira, LG's go-to-market training manager for home entertainment. Welcome back to the program, Jill. Good to talk to you as always. Hey, Mark. Yeah, thanks so much for having me back. It's great to be with you today. Sure. Now, I know it's challenging to talk about OLED TVs on the radio because your eyes can truly appreciate this kind of quality. So we'll do our best here <laughs> for those who haven't yet seen an OLED TV. So I did mention, of course, off the top, we are spending a lot more time at home watching TV, playing video games, catching up on the latest flicks. But what are some of the ways that we can upgrade our entertainment to take them to the next level? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think it's super interesting from my vantage point. We've seen some data that shows that, you know, during the last year and change, consumption is definitely up on screens. And that in, in large part is due to TVs and, and other, uh, other technology. But uh, it, I think people are, be, are more appreciating more the fact that a, a TV isn't all, all TVs aren't made the same, you know, and uh, they're looking at the more premium TVs like OLED uh, to give them that better viewing experience at home, especially with, you know, cinema is not really accessible for the better part of a year and complementing the sound part of that storyline as well. So upgrading the TV and the sound bar seems to be a great way that people can bring that entertainment, whether it's, you know, uh, in lieu of being in, person at a sporting event or at a concert or a cinema, uh, you can definitely get a huge upgrade, uh, especially with the C-Series OLED uh, that has ranges of size from 48 all the way up to 83 inches. So it really does fit 
most use cases and most size uh, necessities for most customers. And we will talk more about audio in a couple of minutes from now because I'm a firm believer that uh, you can't underestimate the importance of good audio when you're watching TV, especially movies, but we'll get to that. So before we talk about LG's OLED C1 series TV lineup, which is really why I wanted to bring you on the program, can you give us a quick refresher on what OLED is all about? Just to take a step back for those who have maybe heard the phrase, but they don't really understand what OLED means, O-L-E-D. For sure. Uh, one of my favorite topics and, and just general technologies to talk about is OLED. Uh, it's pretty fascinating if you look at the last 20 plus years of TV technology that not a lot has changed until the inception of OLED. Um, before that, you have your, your traditional flat screen LCD, um, which had some, some changes over the years in terms of how the light was, how the TV was backlit. And that evolved from an incandescent or fluorescent bulb to an LED, which is now why we call those TVs LED TVs. But they are still LCD TVs, so a liquid crystal display, not to get too technical, basically displays the image, but the image is illuminated from the back with an LED. OLED have none of that in the framework of the TV. It's essentially a sheet of, of light, if you want to look at it that way. So on a 4K TV, you have... 8.3 8.3 million pixels or color dots for the less tech savvy listeners. Basically, you have 8.3 million dots of color, and an OLED can control every single one of those dots independently, whereas LCD TVs can't do that, not even close. So, the ability for that, that amount of control makes it for a game changing experience, whether you're talking about sports or, or movies or gaming, all of that is perfectly. Uh, optimized with the ability to control all those all those pixels. Okay, got it. And because each dot or pixel is its own light source and therefore no backlighting is required, OLED TVs are also super slim. Some of them are just a few millimeters thin, in fact. So it's like hanging a picture frame on your wall. Not to mention they're more energy efficient than some other technologies. And, and as you mentioned, amazing contrast ratios for darker blacks and whiter whites. And as a result, the colors seem to pop more. So there's a lot of advantages uh, to OLED. They handle motion smoothly and, and so on and so forth. So with that in mind, Jill, we are chatting with Jill Pereira, LG's go-to-market training manager for home entertainment. So how can we bring the cinema experience home with LG's OLED TV lineup. Let's talk movies. Yeah, for for, for sure. I, I love the cinema experience, you know, going to the movies, you know, it's not definitely uh, spending some money and you want to get what you pay for, right? So I think that in large part is due to the huge screen, that immersive feel that you get when you're sitting in the theater. And it's not only, uh, again, the picture, but the audio, which you, you mentioned and referenced is very important. And I think truly that OLED is the best alternative for having that cinema experience at home because of its ability to give you that immersive, true to life, realistic cinema feel. Like even the screen itself is borderless, similar to what you have with the screen at the movie theater. Right. You have the audio Dolby Atmos as an example, which gives you that really powerful kind of three-dimensional space experience. For the listeners that ever watched the whole Marvel Universe series that waited till the end for those secret scenes, <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but basically it shows the picture compatibility. And oftentimes you see Dolby Vision or Dolby Atmos or just Dolby Studios in general. And OLED supports all those formats. So I think even just that alone, the fact that it supports the formats that are used in traditional theater uh, is a big testament to that ability to recreate that experience at home. Yeah, fair enough. And with up to 83 inches, you're also getting a nice big screen too. We'll continue chatting about LG OLED TVs when we return. Want to follow Mark? Google him. Mark with a C and Saltzman with a Z. Breaking down geek speak into street speak. This is Tech It Out. Tech It Out with technology columnist, author, and TV personality, Mark Saltzman. Welcome back to Tech It Out, everyone. I'll remind you in a couple of minutes about that Hotels.com $100 gift card giveaway if you missed it off the top of the show. But let's continue chatting with LG's Jill Pereira about LG OLED televisions. Beyond TV shows, though, and movies, what other ways can we utilize our TVs for entertainment at home? I did hint at video games as well off the top. Oh, for sure. I, I think the, the two big ones right now, I, would, I wouldn't even really rank them. It's almost like 1A, 1B would be sports and and gaming uh obviously this time of year 
uh, you know, it's kind of playoff season for the hockey and, and basketball fans out there. Yep. Um, and, and like you said, like, you know, you want that huge, large screen. Well, you know, 83 inches on an OLED screen, no matter if you're watching solo or with a group of friends. And then from the gaming standpoint, uh, the C-Series specifically has oftentimes in the last few years been called out as the best uh, gaming TV in the industry. And uh, for good reason, you know, it has support for all the next gen console compatibility. If you're talking about, you know, the 4K at 120 Hertz or variable refresh rate, G-Sync, all these things that are maybe not very well known to the non-gamers on, on the, in the, of the listeners, but from a gaming standpoint, these are all absolute must haves, not only for present day gaming, but also to kind of future proof your, your gaming mm-hmm. capabilities. And in plain English, it just means that the motion is really smooth. It's not jagged. It looks fantastic with those kinds of technologies like G-Sync and 120 hertz motion. Oh, for sure. I think it's also a great time to mention the fact that our OLED TV specifically, just by the nature of the technology that we use, emit much lower blue light. And I know a lot of products are being marketed right now specifically to block out extra blue light. So you know, especially looking at the fact that more consumption is happening than ever because of the the whole, you know, stay at home situation. Uh, I think it's great to note here that our OLED TVs are set up so that, you know, over a longer period of time, you're less likely to experience any fatigue or issues that you might otherwise have with uh, exceeding time exposed to that blue light. All right. So let's now chat audio a bit more. So with the LG C1 series TVs, do they have good audio out of the gate or you still recommend a soundbar? Yeah. So let's start there. Just audio out of the gate. I definitely think we have a absolutely fantastic premium onboard audio situation. Whether you're talking just the hardware itself, like the actual speakers or the TV's ability to leverage the very powerful processor. So think of it as like, you know, your computer, the better the processor, the better the experience. Similarly, our Alpha 9 processor has this ability to upscale the audio. So whether or not you're watching um, really high-end content or just traditional TV or, or streaming, it has the ability to upscale that and give you this uh, kind of dimensional audio. So it's it's 5.1.2, I don't want to get technical, basically that's giving you kind of like a surround or dimensional experience from, from very simple uh, speakers on board. Now, that being said, uh, oftentimes customers who are looking to an OLED likely either have an existing high-end audio system or are looking to upgrade their audio system, which I definitely think will bring some extra immersion and extra power to the situation, especially if we're looking at recreating a cinema experience at home, right? So more specifically, the Dolby Atmos compatibility, most premium streaming services right now have Dolby Atmos content streaming. And that is oftentimes argued to be the best version of audio right now. And uh, if, if you don't have that application being played from our TV, you don't have access to that better version of audio. So I definitely think that it's a big, big point to mention. uh, And and our OLEDs are are definitely leading the way in that regard. All right. Fair enough. I I asked it because the TVs are getting so thin, as we talked about, that you'd think that audio would be compromised with like, you know, pancake shaped speakers. But there's some new technologies that have been introduced that try to combat the smaller size of the speakers. Plus, again, a soundbar is great. Maybe you're not going to use it when you're watching the news, but when you're watching a movie or playing a video game, definitely want to take advantage of that. So aside from great picture quality and sound, what other features of the C1 OLED series TVs are worth talking about? They are smart TVs as well yeah for sure so we've uh we actually have an award-winning smart platform that we use called web os we're on the sixth version so we're actually on web os 6.0 right now uh quick interesting point that I, I will mention is that it we've gotten so good at our smart tv that we're actually licensing out the use of our smart platform on non-lg tvs and i think that truly does speak to the uh, the user experience, the uh, intuitiveness, and, and just the simplicity of our system. It, it's, much, it's very, very much like a smartphone, and everyone has a smartphone in their hand these days. So we've, we've definitely kind of replicated that easy-to-use experience. Um, we have a very intuitive remote. We call it the magic remote. Think of your mouse on your computer or kind of like a Wii remote control on, on the Nintendo Wii, um, where you have like a point-and-click, you have motion, so the navigation through the, the various menus is, is just absolutely simplistic and, and very user-friendly, right? 
or if, even if you're talking about the ability to customize, again, much like you would on your smartphone, you can, you can move apps around, you can take them off the dashboard altogether and kind of curate it to your own needs and wants as well. Jill, uh, aside from an OLED TV, any other products you'd recommend for bringing that theater experience into the home? For sure. I'm, I'm a big fan of audio. Uh, I'm a huge music fan, and I think our soundbars are absolutely uh, integral in creating that true-to-life cinema experience at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, two main features on our, on our premium bars that stand out to me specifically is, first of all, Dolby Atmos, which I've already quickly touched on. Yep. Um, so our Dolby Atmos compatibility Basically, you have these two additional speakers on top of the soundbar that are up firing. So what that does is it, it really does create this third dimension of the audio experience where traditional surround sound systems are more two-dimensional, so kind of like circular, where this up firing speaker system really adds that third dimension and it's more spherical. Uh, and that really does, to me, add that extra kind of immersion element that you do traditionally get at a movie theater. And secondly, uh, we, we work with this company called Meridian, and they're a, a global uh, industry leader in audio. Um, you know, for reference, they have systems that go for as much as, you know, 50 grand, and you can find their speaker systems in like McLaren sports cars. Um, and we have this partnership that we've had with them for a few years now. All right, so let's wrap up on price, Jill. How much does the OLED C1 series TVs from LG cost? And what's the best website to get going? So the C1 series OLED, it starts at $14.99. And I would refer listeners to LG.com to learn more about pricing and retail locations. Okay, Jill, always great chatting with you. Thanks so much for your time. All the best. Looking forward to the next one. Thanks so much for having me today, Mark. I'll remind you about that Hotels.com gift card giveaway on Tech It Out after this short break. And we're also going to learn about ransomware and what you should do if you fall victim to it. Should you pay? We'll touch base with ESET's Tony Anscombe. Stick with us. We'll be right back with more Tech It Out. Breaking down geek speak into street speak. Tech It Out. Hosted by Mark Saltzman. Welcome back to Tech It Out, and thank you to Hotels.com for another $100 gift card giveaway this hour. We're going to be doing five throughout the summer, by the way. And you can use that $100 digital gift card towards a future stay in a hotel. Just head over to MarkSaltzman.com, which is my website, and you can send me a note with the phrase, Tech It Out. You are eligible for a random draw next week. You have to be a U.S. resident and at least 18 years of age. If you prefer social media instead of email, you can go to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. Search for me, Mark Saltzman, Mark with a C, S-A-L-T-Z-M-A-N. You could just write the words tech it out. And if you want to follow me on social media, I do write a tech tip of the day. I'll tell you more about the Hotels.com app in a couple of moments from now, but let's kick off our chat with Tony Anscombe from ESET about ransomware. It seems every day we're hearing, reading, or watching the news about another high-profile attack, and that includes ransomware. So what can you do to protect yourself from cyber thieves out there? Well, for the answers, we're joined by Tony Anscombe, cybersecurity expert and global spokesperson for ESET, a leading cybersecurity company and, of course, sponsor of this program. Welcome back to the show, Tony. Good to chat with you. Good to be here again, Mark. Awesome. Now, before we talk about ransomware, tell us a bit about ESET and its cybersecurity solutions. So ESET are a long-standing, so 30 years in the cybersecurity business, and produce a, a range of products from what my mum might use on her phone and her laptop all the way through to a big enterprise solutions for uh EDR and enterprise threat, uh, threat investigations and such like. So all from one one end all the way through to the other end of that scale, Mark. Mm, okay. And ESET even has partners with some app stores, including some big ones, to scan the apps that the developers submit before we as consumers download them. That's correct. We're one of three ADA partners for Google and the Play Store. So we see the apps before they enter the store. Wow. Amazing. And then a couple of weeks ago was ESET World. Tell us about that. What's it all about? So every year we hold uh, an annual conference for our partners and uh, this year some of our customers and journalists. 
And what we do is we talk about our technology and the threat landscape and what's happening in the cybersecurity industry. Was it online only this year? It was online only, and yeah. as it was last year. However, a number of the presenters from our HQ were all in one place, but that's because they're, they are all in one place. <laughs> um, but yes, well, I look forward to an in-person event next year. And I remember seeing you at an in-person event, Tony, in Tallinn, in Estonia, of all places, at an ESET event a couple of years ago. That was a blast. It was a blast. And uh, what a cool country. It's mm -hmm. one of the only countries in the world that have embraced digital identity fully. Uh, interesting. Cool. All right. So speaking about digital and identity theft and all that, let's talk ransomware because it seems to be in the news a lot these days, including the Colonial Pipeline story. Let's uh, first define what ransomware is. Well, that's an interesting topic in itself, Mark, because ransomware is changing. So typically, we would think of ransomware as something that encrypts your data or locks you out of a system and holds you to ransom. However, with some of the big attacks, it's also become very much about a data breach as well. So at its core, uh, as the name suggests, this is when your, your files are locked down, they're held for ransom unless you pay. So these bad guys are trying to extort money from you, it's usually cryptocurrency, in order to release your files so you have access to them once again. Well, that's if you're lucky enough, if you pay, that they do actually provide yeah. the decryptor. I mean, bear in mind, these are cyber criminals. True. So I'm going to ask you in a moment, do you pay if you're hit with a ransomware attack? But we'll get to that in a moment. So ransomware is happening to regular consumers as well as businesses and even governments. If big companies and, and federal governments can't stop ransomware, what can we do as regular users of technology? The most important thing is not to click those links, not to give away our credentials. And if you've got attachments in email or such like, yeah, don't open those attachments unless unless it's something you were expecting them from a person you trust. Um, as a consumer, yeah, I think very much ransomware is hitting still in either you know from a website you click and download something or an email attachment that you're opening. So just avoid them all. Okay. Be cautious about the kinds of websites you're going to. Be suspicious if you get emails from people that were unsolicited with attachments or links asking you to click on. And if you do fall victim to a ransomware attack. And again, I'm talking about regular folks listening to this or a small business owner tuning into this program. They got you. Like you get a message on the screen, your computer is locked uh, and it says pay up or you don't get your, your stuff back. What do you do? Do you pay or do you not pay? Because I've read conflicting answers to that. Well, you do not pay because your payment helps fund cybercrime. So Funding the cyber criminal will help them gain resource or keep them in business to go and do this to somebody else. So you don't pay. There are a lot of decryptors out there, especially for ransomware that hits the likes of consumers because it's maybe less sophisticated. And there's a good potential that if you go to uh, a good computer person, they may well be able to source a decryptor for you and get you out of the sticky mesh you're in. All right, but if you can't touch your computer because of this message, they know of a way to restart it and try to, to fix it, right? Like if we can't do it, then what, what's the rule of thumb? You just turn it off? You could switch it off, but one thing you don't want to do is mess with it too much unless uh, you know what you're doing. Because if you decide at some stage to go to law enforcement and report this, you don't want to be destroying any evidence. We'll continue chatting with Tony from ESET about ransomware after this short break. Don't forget to download that Hotels.com app for access to secret prices on hotel stays, benefits to rewards nights, including some exclusive offers. You can save all your confirmation details and everything in the app, even offline, and a lot more. Go to the App Store or Google Play Store to download the free Hotels.com app today. We'll be right back with more Tech It Out to continue chatting with ESET. Stick with us. Follow Mark Saltzman on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Listen to Tech It Out whenever you want. We are chatting with Tony Enscombe. He is the global spokesperson for ESET, a leading cybersecurity company, and he is a, an expert in this space. So why are companies paying then? We, we do hear about companies that will pay to, to get their files back, their customer data or whatever was held for ransom. Why are they doing it then when the cybersecurity experts say do not pay ever? Well, I think there's a, a mix of reasons in here, Mark. One is uh, like I say, a ransomware attack is about locking you out of the system, but the, part two of it is also 
the cyber criminal typically for a company has exfiltrated the data outside of the network as well. So they've already got the sensitive data. So this is no longer a quick attack for a cyber criminal. You know, they've been in the network, they've looked for the sensitive data, they've taken it, and then it's about unlocking the systems and also ensuring that the cyber criminal is not going to publish or sell that data on the dark web. And lots of companies, unfortunately, have cyber insurance and lean back on that cyber insurance and turn and pay. Uh, and you know, insurance is not a is not a good thing for cyber security because what it's doing is actually funding those cyber criminals and giving them a, an incredible amount of resource. Yeah, I got it. And what about a preemptive backup? So I often encourage uh, my listeners to have regular backups, like every night, for example, at say one in the morning, schedule your important files to be backed up either to a trusted cloud provider or a local drive that's connected to your uh, PC or Mac. That could minimize damage if you are caught off guard and your files are held for ransom. Because you've got a backup of it, you may just shrug it off and just move on, right? Well, actually, you just mentioned two very different types of backup there, Mark. And actually, it's one of those that could well save you and that one is the one that is disconnected so if so, if a cyber criminal does access the system in there for a period of time before they inflict their damage of encrypting the data they may well already have seen that there is a real-time backup mm. into the cloud yeah. or a drive attached to a machine that's being used for backup one thing that's clear is companies that have disconnected backups are in a much better position to actually recover from a ransomware attack. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks for that. Before we wrap up with you, Tony, let's chat about other kinds of cyber attacks happening these days. We just heard about a Windows 11 leak a week or so ago. And before that, Electronic Arts or EA, a major video game company, had some important code stolen, not customer data, but still their their source code to make games. So if tech companies can't stop ransomware, this is a pretty scary thing. How can we fight back and and please talk to us about having cybersecurity software like ESET that can detect anything suspicious. Well, it's important to have uh, cybersecurity software on your device, but more importantly, it's also important to have it updated and make sure it's actually operational. With that, I say, you know, don't let it expire. If you're a home user, don't let it expire and say, well, I'll, I'll get around to that next month. You know, actually having the latest version that's looking for the latest variants of malware out there is super important and think about you know something that prompts you to have good behavior continually as well so every time you get an email and it's got a link in it you know look at the email and be vigilant always question whether that's something you're expecting and whether that's a link you want to click on and one tip i always say if you if you receive something with a link in it go directly to the website and log on you don't actually need to click the link Right. And to be clear, Tony, when you were talking about updating the cybersecurity software, reputable software like ESET Internet Security, that will update on its own for you. But you mean when the annual subscription is up for renewal, don't delay. Is that what you're referring to? That's absolutely what I was referring to. Yeah. And um, beyond that, Mark, is obviously you need to update all the other devices in your house as well. If you've got IoT devices or smart devices, make sure they're all patched to the very latest level. Mm -hmm. And one thing as consumers that I think is often forgotten is make sure your router has a password on it and a unique password that's a common error in a lot of home networks right not the word admin for the password to your router (laughs) which is often the one that's often the password by default Uh, so to change that uh, that's a good reminder tony so is there a website you'd recommend to learn more If, if i remember from our last interview there's two websites that you would recommend well i'd certainly recommend welivesecurity.com that's the ESET blog site and that has a lot of useful information not only about current threats and news but also uh, some good articles in there as tips as well mm-hmm. all right so welivesecurity.com and then of course eset.com in order to download a free trial for the software if you don't already have eset already tony thanks so much for your time always great chatting with you i always learn something look forward to chatting with you again and hopefully seeing you soon as well that would be great wouldn't it to actually see you and maybe have a cup of coffee or a beer mark <laughs> sounds and, good uh, thank you for having me back on the show thank you for tuning in to tech it out everyone good luck if you're sending me an email or hitting me up on social media to be eligible for that 100 hotels.com gift card mark saw 
marcsaltzman.com, M-A-R-C-S-A-L-T-Z-M-A-N.com. A huge thank you to Asus, the title sponsor on this program. Thank you for all your support over the years. Head over to asus.com slash US slash radio to check out their stellar laptops. All the best, everyone. Have a great week ahead, and I look forward to catching up with you next weekend for a brand new episode of Tech It Out. Ciao.